Okay, so at the end of the last unit, we talked a little about the mathematical theory behind fitting logistic models. And now I want to show how you can do those calculations very easily in Python with the sklearn package. So we're gonna return back to the breast cancer demo that I have up on the GitHub, GitHub site. So just go to collab research.google.com and find that demo, run the cells and scroll down to this part on fitting logistic models. So just for the purpose of visualization, I'm gonna first look at just fitting a model using two variables, the size and the margin. So let's just grab that data. So that will be a, um, now we have a data matrix X which has 683 samples and two columns, one for each of these variables. Remember that the full data set had 10 attributes, but I just want to look at two right now. And just like normal, we're going to split that into training and test. Just um, put 30% for test, but you could put a different value. Then remember that these attributes are very different types of values. Some are um, margins or sizes, some are other gradations from zero to 10. So because they are non-uniform, we wanna put them in a uniform scaling. And just like we've always done, we create a scaling object, and then we run the uh, training data through that to fit the scaling parameters and transform it. And then for the test data, we just scale the um, test data. So now I have scale, training, and test data. At this point, fitting the logistic of regression is super easy. All you do is you create a logistic regression object and then call the fit. So it's very similar to the linear regression. The only little thing is that there's this regularization term. Um, if you go back to the previous unit, we were talking about regularization. So way logistic regression works, you have to put a little bit of regularization. So I put a very small amount in the syntax of Python, the higher the value C, actually the lower the regularization. So it's just very slightly um, regularized. And then we run it and it's really fast. So clicking that button, what actually happened, it did that numerical method to minimize that loss function that we were talking about. And all that occurred just with that little click. Um, we're going to go back, as I said, in the next unit and actually build our own optimizer to do this so we can understand what happens. But here I just want to look at the results. Okay, so we fitted on the training data. And now we we'll just make some predictions on the test data. So we just call the predict and count the number of samples on the test data that were matched. And it's about 93, 94% accurate. That number might change if you run the code yourself because there's some randomization in the train test split. But it's probably close to what you might've got with a hand-picked design if you did the first in-class exercise. Um, and we're gonna actually show when you visualize it that the boundary is probably pretty similar. But the point about this is that it's completely automated. Okay, just to visualize this result, I have this little plotting code. I don't wanna walk through the plotting gymnastics here, but let me just show you the results. So this is how you can visualize a classifier, or at least a logistic classifier. So in this case, we have two variables, the size and the margin. And for each size margin value, we want to make a prediction about whether it's malignant or benign, this cancer. So it's a binary classification problem. Now, the red and green circles are the data, if you recall. So the red samples are the points where the samples were malignant and the green where they were benign and the size of the circle were the number of samples at that location. So we saw here that in the lower left, um, there were more benign samples and in the upper right, there were more malignant samples. 
And the classifier has kind of learned this relation. As you move up to the right, it assigns it a higher probability, which is a darker blue. So if you're in the bottom left, it's almost white, and white corresponds to like zero probability. So it's very low chance that it's a malignant. But if you go up higher, it gets bluer and bluer. So it's learned this relation and you get this gradual switch. Now, if you say where is the 50% boundary, that's where this is. So if you say, I'm going to say any time the classifier outputs a value that's more than 50% likely that it's malignant, I'm going to call it malignant. And then you would get this dark blue region. And otherwise, if you would say it's benign, and you'd get this white region. So this is an example of a hard decision classifier using the boundary from the soft decision. Now, we're going to talk about in the next unit, well, actually, I'm not going to talk about it, but if you go to the slides, you may not want to make that decision boundary at the 50% point. There's trade-offs you can make. So, for example, maybe you want to know that even if it's a 10% chance that it's um, benign, malignant, you might want to go ahead and start a uh, biopsy or something further to verify whether it's malignant or not, just to be careful. So you might want to switch that boundary. But this is what's drawn here for the 50% case. All right, so this is a nice way to visualize it. <clears throat> okay, so now let me redo this on all the variables. There's um, 10 variables in the fr uh, frame, but we're going to remove the first one because it's just ID. And we've also removed the last variable uh, because it's the target. All right, so we're going to get that and put it into a data frame. All right, and um, so we have here a 683 by 9 um, matrix. So 683 samples and 9 features. And you can see all the features here. All right, that's pretty straightforward. And we just repeat exactly what we did before. We scale it. Um, uh, the training and test, then we fit on the training and measure the accuracy on the test. So it's really pretty straightforward. And now if you do all nine variables super fast, you get a 97% accuracy. Finally, let's just take a look at the coefficients for this. So you can get the coefficients from this uh, our, red, our, red, our, <clears throat> our regression object. You can get our coefficients from the regression object and it has a field coef. And we're just, just to print out the features kind of nicely, I'm going to put it into a pandas data frame and then um, print it out. And let's just run that. And here we go. We see there are nine features and the coefficients beside them. So you can see here that some of the coefficients seem to matter more, like the thickness, um, but others don't seem to matter as much, like the shape or uniformity of the shape. All right, now one thing about this, in this particular data set, is that you don't have that many samples, only about 683. So you might want to do a little bit better um, uh, accuracy through some k-fold validation and it's basically the exact same validation code that we were doing in the linear case so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a k-fold object in this case I'm going to do 10-fold validation and then I loop over each fold I split it into training and test based on that fold then I scale the training and test data Remember, always scale within the loop, don't scale outside the loop. Fit it on the training data in that fold and measure the accuracy. I've also um, measuring three other metrics called the precision, the recall, and the F1 score. Um, you can read in the notes, it'll describe what these are. I'm not gonna go through them. And then I'm going to take the mean of all of these and then their standard error across the fold. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's run that. It's actually quite fast. It's pretty much immediate in this case. Um, it's a simple data set. And again, an accuracy here 
on average about 96 to 97 percent with about a 1.1 percent standard error. All right, so that wraps up this. If you go to the notes, you'll find a few more things which you can look up, um, looking about how to set the thresholds, different types of error rates, and the rock curve, and also how you can combine logistic regression with other regularizers like L1 or L2. But I think you have enough now to try out the lab or other exercises.